this lesson, we're going to study um, two more apportionment methods, one proposed by Daniel Webster, um, and the other one is called Huntington Hill, which is proposed by two mathematicians, um, and that is our current method of apportionment in the House of Representatives and the Electoral College. Okay, so Webster's method is just like Jefferson's and Adams' method, except that the rounding is different. Okay, instead of rounding down always or rounding up always, we use the standard rounding method that you learned in like elementary school. 0.5 and above round up, below 0.5 round down. Otherwise, everything is pretty much exactly the same. Same flow chart, um, same rough guide for how to change, how much to change D by. So um, coming back to the Congress of Parador, we've been working on this for um, a couple of classes now. We're giving out 250 seats um, to a total population of 12,500,000. Okay, so I already have the standard quotas done. I divided each state's population by the standard divisor of 50,000. And if you don't remember how to get the 50,000, remember you take your 12,500,000 standard divisor is your total population divided by the number of seats you have to give out, 250. So you get 50,000 people per seat, right? So that's where the 50,000 comes from. Then you take each state's population and divide by 50,000. How many sets of 50,000 people are there? Every set of 50,000 people gets a representative in Congress. All right, so I've already done my standard quotas here. Now, my rounded quotas, I'm using standard rounding now for Webster's method. So 32.92, that goes gets rounded up to 33. 138.72, that gets rounded up to 139. 3.08, that gets rounded down to 3. 41.82 gets rounded up to 42. 13.7, that gets rounded up to 14. And 19.76, that gets rounded up to 20. And then we add these up. And it comes out to 33 plus 139 plus 3 plus 42 plus 14 plus 20. It comes out to 251. So I gave out too many seats, which means I need to make my divisor bigger. When the sum is too big, make the divisor bigger. So that's just exactly what the flowchart says, right? I've got T is too big, make D bigger, and start again. So I'm only off by one seat. So I just am going to change um, D, change the divisor of 50,000 by half a percent. So half a percent, 0 0.005 times 50,000 is 250. So I want to make D bigger by about 250. Um, and then I divide each state's population by 50,250. And I get 32.76, and then 6, 936, divided by 50, 250, and I get 138.03, and then 154, divided by 50, 250, 3.06. State D, that comes out to 41.61. And State E, that comes out to 13.63. And State F, I get 19.66. All right, now I round all of these numbers according to my standard rounding rules. 32.76, that rounds up to 33. 138.03, that rounds down to 138. 3.06, that rounds down to 3. 41.61 rounds up to 42. 13.63 rounds to 14. And 19.66 rounds to 20. When I add those up, I get 250 seats. 
So just like Jefferson's and Adams, except for the rounding method. Round using your standard rounding rules. So we've studied several historical solutions to the American apportionment problem. Um, today we're going to conclude um, with a look at how we do it now. So our current solution to the US apportionment problem is called Huntington Hill. And in 1929, Congress was fed up with the controversies surrounding apportionment. They asked a panel of mathematicians to recommend a quote unquote correct formula. The method suggested by the mathematicians goes by the name Huntington Hill after its two inventors. Congress didn't adopt this recommendation until 1941, but when it did, it made Huntington Hill the permanent apportionment method and made the method self-executing, no, no need for congressional approval for apportionment changes that are dictated by this method. And it permanently fixed the number of representatives in the House at 435. So the Huntington Hill method has stood the test of time so far, but it's constantly being challenged by states that lose a seat under the method. Federal courts, including the Supreme Court, have all upheld it so far. So we need a small mathematical detour in order to understand the Huntington Hill method. The standard way of averaging two numbers is to take the number halfway between them by adding them together and dividing by two. Um, and this average is called the arithmetic mean. There are other kinds of means as well, um, like the geometric mean, the harmonic mean, and the quadratic mean. The Huntington Hill employs the geometric mean, so here's how you find it. The geometric mean of two positive numbers, A and B, is the square root of their product. So you multiply them together, then take the square root. For comparison purposes, the arithmetic mean is add them and divide by two. So let's find both the arithmetic and the geometric means of 2 and 8. So the arithmetic mean, that's your standard mean, that's where you add them together and divide by 2. 2 plus 8 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. Your geometric mean is where you multiply them together, 2 times 8, and then take their square root. So 2 times 8 is 16, the square root of 16 is 4. So your arithmetic mean and your geometric mean are different. All right, let's do um, one that's a little bit harder. So 11 and 4. So your arithmetic mean is where you add them together and divide by 2. So it's 15 over 2 is 7 and a half. Your geometric mean is multiply them together and then take their square root. So 11 times 4 is 44. And the square root of 44, according to my calculator, is 6.63. Okay, so the point of this little excursion was so we could learn the Huntington Hill method of apportionment. I'm going to start off by saying it works very much like Webster's method and Adams and Jefferson's, except the rounding is a little different. And it's different than any rounding method you have seen before. And you're going to think it's weird, and that's okay. It is a little weird. All right, the Huntington Hill rounding rule. If the modified quota is below the geometric mean of the lower quota and the upper quota, you round down. If the modified quota is above the geometric mean, you round up. So for example, let's say a state's modified quota is 32.68, and we're trying to figure out how to round. First, we need the geometric mean of 32 and 33. So we multiply them together and you get 1,056, and then you take the square root of 1,056, so you get 32.496. This is your cutoff, 32.496. In Webster's method, with your standard rounding, your cutoff would be 32.5. If your modified quota is above 32.5, you round up, and below, you round down. So now I've just changed my cutoff a little bit. Now it's 32.496. My modified quota, 32.68, is bigger than 32.496, so I round up. 32.496 is my cutoff. That's the cutoff number. When your quota is above it, round up, and below it, round down. So let's do another one. I'm going to do 
um, 5.48, that's the modified quota. I want to round that number. It's either going to go down to 5 or up to 6 according to A, a normal rounding rule, right? So if I was just using normal rounding, that would round down to 5 because 0.48 is less than 0.5. But B is a much more complicated question. If I want to use the Huntington Hill rounding rule, first I need to get a new cutoff number. So I have to take the geometric mean of 5 and 6. So my new cutoff is the square root of 5 times 6. So the square root of 30 is 5.477. That's my cutoff. Instead of 5.5, above it round up, below it round down, my cutoff is 5.477. 5.48 is above that, right? So 5.48 is above the cutoff, so I'm going to round up. So round to 6, according to Huntington Hill. So my cutoff was 5.477. 5.48 is bigger than that, so I round it up. One more. Okay, state's modified quota is 7.49. Normal rounding would mean you round that to 7, right? 7.49, that's less than 7.5. Cut off is 7.5, below round down. So Huntington Hill rounding, I have to find a new cutoff, right? So my cutoff is going to be the square root of 7 times 8 the round down number and the round up number, 7.49. Lower quote is 7, upper quote is 8. Multiply them and take the square root. So the square root of 56 is 7.483. That's my cutoff. 7.49 is above that, so I round up. Right, so 7.49 is above my cutoff of 7.483, so I round up to 8. So Huntington Hill is similar to your standard rounding, it's just that the cutoff is in a different place. It's not always 0.5. It's usually close to 0.5, but it's a little bit different. You have to find that cutoff every time using the geometric mean. All right, so summary of Huntington Hill, exactly like Jefferson's, Webster's, Adams, um, except that the rounding rule is different, right? So let's go ahead and work through the um, Parador example using Huntington Hill. So I've already got the standard quotas done. Um, now I'm going to find out my cutoff for each one of these. So my lower quota is 32, upper quota is 33. And then the geometric mean of the lower and the upper quota, you multiply them together, 32 times 33, and then take the square root, and you get 32.496. That's your rounding cutoff. And do that for B, C, D, E, and F. So let's see. Lower quota is 138, upper quota is 139. The square root of 138 times 139 is 138.499. And then C, lower quota 3, upper quota 4. The square root of 12 is 3.464. And then 41, 42. And that comes out to 41.496 when you take the product and square root it. And then I have 13 and 14. And that's 13.49. And then 19 and 20. That's 19.494. All right, so those are my cutoffs. Those are my rounding values. Now I have to compare my standard quota to my cutoff, right? The cutoff is above it round up, below it round down. 
So 32.92, that's larger than the cutoff, so I'm going to round up to 33. 138.72, that's larger than my cutoff of 138.499, so I round up to 139. 3.08, that's below the cutoff of 3.464, round down to 3. 41.82 is above the cutoff of 41.496, so I round up to 42. 13.7 is above the cutoff number, so I round up to 14. And 19.76 is above the cutoff, so I round up to 20. Okay. Add those together. 33 plus 139 plus 3 plus 42 plus 14 plus 20, 251. Okay. So now I have to make my change my divisor. Right? I've given out too many seats, so I make my divisor bigger. I'm going to go up by half a percent, so I go to 50,250. Do all my division again. All right, so I have 1646 divided by 50,250. 32.76. 6936 divided by 50, 250, 138.03, 154 divided by 50, 250, 3.06, 2091 divided by 50, 250, 41.6, 685 divided by 50, 250, 13.63, and 988 divided by 50, 250 is 19.66. All right, so now I have to do it again, lower quota, upper quota, and a cutoff. So my lower quota is 32, upper quota is 33. That's exactly what it was before, right, 32 and 33. So my cutoff remains the same. I don't have to redo the calculation unless, unless those changed. So 32.496 is my cutoff. Looking at my new modified quota, 32.76 is above the cutoff, so I round to 33. Okay, so 138.03, my lower quota is 138, upper quota is 139. That's what it was before, so uh, my cutoff is still 138.499. And now I look at my modified quota, 138.03. That is well below the cutoff of 138.499, so I round down to 138. Okay, so 3.06, lower quota 3, upper quota 4, cutoff is the same as it was before because 3 and 4 were the lower quota and the upper quota. So I have 3.464 is the cutoff. 3.06, my new modified quota, well below the cutoff, so I round down to 3. And here I have 41, 42, same cutoff, 41.496. 41.61 is well above the cutoff, so I round up to 42. And then this is 13, 14, same cutoff. 13.63 um, is above the cutoff, so I round up to 14. And then 19.66 is my new quota here, so I round down to 19, up to 20. My cutoff is the square root of 19 times 20, which is 19.494, and 19.66 is above that, so I round up to 20, add them together, and I get 250 seats. Okay. So is this apportionment using Hamilton Huntington Hill for Parador the same or different as the apportionment for Webster's? It is exactly the same. Okay. Webster's method and Huntington Hill method almost always give the exact same results because your cutoffs 
are typically very, very close to 0.5, right? 0 0.496, 0 0.499, 0 0.464. Instead of using 0.5 as the cutoff, we're using something very, very close to 0.5. So they almost always come out the same. We'd have to make up a very contrived example um, to see something that came out different. So that's it for the lecture portion. I'm going to have you move on to working on your activities, work through them, um, check your answers as you go. They, the answers are right after um, the activities in your packet. Uh, and let me know if you have any questions.